Okay, hi everyone. Uh, today I'm doing a Coruscant Miniatures uh, mail video. Um, this is actually take two because we had a interruption from the the wargaming assistant uh, stealing the packing peanuts. But uh, anyway, uh, so I got a bunch of different things. Um, I got uh, Polish uh, light cavalry. Uh, I've got a pack of another pack of Polish infantry. Uh, I've got some. Uh, these are supposed to be Knights of Malta, Hospitaller Musk, um, Musketeers from late 16th, the, the Coruscant, uh, late 16th century range. Um, I decided I'm going to use these for um, uh, like a Western, uh, uh, Western mercenaries in Polish service. Um, this is more cavalry. We'll open those up. Um, Polish cavalry. Um, and then I also have, uh, these are the, this is the Hospitaller Command section. And then, um, got a Polish Infantry Command. These are, um, 17th century from the late 17th century range so they're a little later than the period um I'm, I'm going for but um i think i can you know they can they can be sort of swapped in and out as necessary okay but um kind of the thing i wanted to talk about most uh was the tibetans so this isn't going to be a, a big new army project in the near future, but um, I, uh, I've i been uh, interested in the Tibetan Empire for a while. There's only like one real book in English about it. Um, you can find that pretty easily. Um, but uh, I got a, just, a, just a handful of figures because Khorasan uh, makes a range for them. So the Tibetan Empire existed in the um, <clears throat> in the, uh, starting around the seventh century, uh, and they existed until, I think about the 900s uh, AD. Um, they fought the Tang Chinese, they fought the, uh, the Gok Turks, so the early Turkish Khanate, um, and they were kind of part of, like, the Silk Road kingdoms, or early medieval Silk Road kingdoms. Uh, it, it encompassed um, about the, the modern day kind of Tibet and then a little bit more. Um, yeah, but uh, I got, uh, so they have a pack with the command. So one of these, I have to check which which is which, but one of these is the emperor, the Tsanpo, and then one of these is like the prime minister, the, the called the Blonche. Um, and then I got some of the Tibetan infantry. Um, as you can see, they they were pretty heavily armored, uh, which is which is interesting. Um, and uh, they're pikemen, so I just got a pack of the pikes and uh, pikemen and uh, and the uh, and the commands. Um, and if and they make. Um, a pack with the the emperor and the the prime minister uh, or the the great minister. That's the literal translation, but uh, the title. But um, on foot or um, or uh, or mounted, and I just opted to get the mounted version. So yeah, and these are the pikes. Um, you know, they're, they're the soft metal, so, you know, for some people that might be, uh, you know, you might want to replace these. I, I don't mind it. I actually prefer them to the hard metal, uh, spear, uh, wire spears because, um, these, these I've noticed are a little easier to glue and work with than the, the stiff wire spears. Um, but, you know, it's a preference and I know some people like the, uh, using the, uh, bristles from like a broom, um, uh, but, uh, you know, that's kind of whatever gets the job done, I guess. So I got that. And, um, if I, if I do end up, um, kind of turning, turning this into, um, 
a, a, you know, two, two gaming armies. I think I'll probably do the, the Tang Chinese uh, and, and uh, as the opposing force because Kurosan also makes a Tang China uh, range, which is nice. Uh, the only problem is, is um, as I've been reading the Tibetan, uh, old Tibetan annals, um, you know, they don't really explain, like, how the battles worked uh, exactly. It's mostly just, um, you know, there was a battle uh, in, this, in this place against, you know, China or whatever. But um, still, I think it would be fun, uh, even visually, I think. This is another, maybe, convention game I could do if I can ever get around to a convention. Um, okay, so that's the Tibetans. Um, and, uh, it'll be fun. Um, I think I'll, these, I'll, these will paint up pretty quickly because it's mostly metal. They're wearing, like, this kind of, um, oh, what's the armor term? Like, when it's sewed, like, little metal plates sewn together. Um, lamellar? No. Uh, anyway, that kind of armor, if, uh, if any, if anyone knows the word. Um, yeah, so that's got those, which is nice. So it'll be just a little, just the, uh, you know, the, the Tibetan, uh, command and, uh, and stuff. And then, all right, let's take a look at these other packs. Um, this is the Polish Infantry Command. Um, And, uh, yeah, like I said, these are clearly, like, of more late, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, late 17th century, um, but, you know, I, I figure I'll, uh, you know, I can just take them in and out, depending on the scenario. Um, got a musician, uh, the two officers, and I guess, you know, one, uh, I guess this is the standard bearer, and we've got a sergeant, and they're more dressed in like a Western style. Um, so I'm not sure which is which, cause I guess one of these is like one, one or one of these weapons is for the, the officer. And then I'm assuming this is the, the, the flagpole, but, um, yeah, nice figures. Um, the, uh, the musician is still dressed in like regular, regular clothing. Um, very nicely sculpted, as usual, from Kurosan, so go ahead and put those away. Um, and then we have the Polish, uh, Light Cavalry. I'm not going to open up every, every single pack, but, um, these are the Light Cavalry with kind of short spears. Um... Weapons and uh, yeah, uh, get the weapons, the horses, and one one good thing about uh, this the um, the sculpting on these is the way that the Kurosan does the riders is like the rider and the saddle are one piece, so it does give you a lot of kind of surface to glue. The only drawback is the way their their horses are kind of skinny, so it's a little, um, you can see it's kind of loose, so um, you have to kind of glue it to one side. Um, I guess I could probably, like, use green stuff or something, too, but, um, yeah, it's just something to be aware of when assembling these, but, yeah, they're <clears throat> Polish uh, light cavalry, and sculpted with carbines and uh, bows. I guess I could use these as like the Wallachian style cavalry or the, or the Cossack style maybe. Um, not sure yet, but like cavalry with, with short spears, so which is kind of what I thought I needed for my, um, my Polish force. Um, yeah, nice miniatures. 
Um, and like I said, I'm not going to open up every single pack because uh, it would just be kind of, I think, a boring. But uh, yeah, I got enough to make a unit. And um, did I get a? I don't think I got a command for them because I don't. I don't really think it's necessary. But um, okay, uh, the next set of figures is the. I got some of these Polish musketeers uh, with the axes. Um, I'm not sure when they use these exactly, but um, uh, mostly I bought them because they look cool. So um, I just got the ones at the ready. I've got, uh, yeah, just going to have to do a little bit of cleanup on these guys, but they're pretty good. Um, very detailed, nice and crisp. Um, yeah, I think compared to the Warlord games figures for Pike and Shot, um, the one thing that you know I was I was really annoyed painting the cavalry, especially. But I think it's just because those that range of twenty eight millimeter figures uh, and the infantry too. The detail isn't very good, but these Kurasan figures. Even with all the details, I think it always helps when the figure when a figure is nicely sculpted because you can pick out the things, the surfaces to paint a lot easier. And then when everything's kind of mushed together, it's it's harder because I notice some of the fire and sword figures are, are kind of like that. But yeah, I got uh, a few different poses. Um, and Let's see, I think this is a, how many did we get? One, two, three. So get four, it's so got eight. Um, and then we'll have the command and I think that'll be enough to build out a, a unit. Um, yeah. So that's nice. And then last, but certainly not uh, least, I've got the, these are the Knights of St. John and the Knights of Spittler. Um, and uh, like I said, these are for more design from the late 16th century range um, to be used for the, uh, the Siege of Malta. So Suleiman, Sultan Suleiman's second to last campaign. Uh, where the he was defeated. Um, I don't really know that much about that campaign. Actually, there's a there is a popular book uh, by that that this one historian Roger Crawley, but uh, I'd, I'd like to look at the at the uh, Turkish sources. Uh, probably some of you have come to know, but anyway, here's we've got the command. So we've got the. Musician, got a musician. I guess the I guess this is supposed to be the officer, and then this is the standard bearer. And in the pack, you get you get enough for two two uh, two command stands, which is nice. And you get the the uh, the banner. Uh, but uh, like I said, I'm going to use these. Uh, I'm gonna paint them as hospitalers, but they're just gonna be stand-ins for as like a Western merc generic mercenaries for um, for uh, for the the Polish uh, Polish Commonwealth. Um, the uh, I would like to probably do um, like a Malta Siege of Malta themed game. Uh, but, um, yeah, again, it's just something I need to do more research on. Um, and it's, it's one of those battles because it's so, in, it's, it's so attractive and, and it is, it is pretty notable. Uh, you know, it's probably got a lot of, uh, collected a lot of, uh, historical barnacles, let's say from, from bad secondary books, but, uh, 
anyway, I, I shouldn't be so negative, but, uh, yep, so I would like to do that at some point, because the Knights of Malta are neat, and, uh, and uh, I'm working on a project on the on the Siege of Rhodes in 1522 uh, for a little while now, so it would be interesting to see what changes by the time of Malta. And then these are the uh, mercenary gunners for the knights, and we've got, uh, yeah, just going to have to do a little bit of cleanup, um, but these are really nicely sculpted. Just this a little bit. So you get a mix of poses of loading and uh, firing. You know, when I base these up, I, I do try to make ranks of like loading and firing, but it's not always possible just because when you order from Curseline, you get a mix of the different poses. So, um, you know, it is what it is. You just gotta, gotta do, uh, make do. Um, but, uh, yeah, they look really nice. I, I have no, never have any complaints, uh, with ordering from, uh, Curacon. Um, you know, like, like you can, as you can see, you know, you, you gotta do a little bit of cleanup on these figures, but, but really not much. So it's, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, pretty happy with, with all, with what I've got. Um, and I think having the, the Western mercenaries would be nice to just have a little bit of a, a little bit of something, you know, visually different in the Polish army to, uh, to, to make them stand out. Um, all right. Um, and you could, you could also use these for war gaming the late 16th century Habsburg army. So these would have been the guys fighting in um, Hungary against the Turks in the 1590s and in the Low Countries um, because they've got the, the helmets and then they've got the kind of 16th century trousers and hose. So, yep. Um, okay, that was kind of long, but um, I hope you, you guys at least found it interesting. Um, I'll get these, uh, get these, uh, painted or based up or, uh, sorry, prepared soon and then start painting them. I'm going to keep, uh, going to keep working away. Um, next things on the painting table, going to finish the, the Transylvanians. I've got, uh, got to do the mounted high jukes and I've got some, some mounted, uh, secklers. Um, and then I'll have to check what else is in the... And then I have to finish the last two Cossack wagons, I think. And then, um, yeah, so... A lot of nice figures today. Finally glad I got this package. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.